Away, directed by Ron. Now oh. calling my daughter's name. It airs Sunday on CBS. Please welcome Donna Mills. <laughs> become quite the tennis player since I first met you. <laughs> Remember when I met you? I do. At yeah. a tennis tournament in Aspen, Colorado. Yes. I didn't play no tennis, but it was free and I was going. <laughs> <laughs> you play tennis? Oh, yeah. Oh. If there's a trip involved. Uh, but I know. I used to do that, too. That's how I learned how to play tennis. You played Agassi, didn't you? I did, yeah. They called me up one day and they said, uh, how would you like to play a tournament with Chang and Agassi? Not a tournament, an exhibition match. Mm -hmm. I said, okay like the biggest thrill of my tennis life uh, and so I did I played with Chang against Agassi and uh, I hit down the line past Agassi twice that's great yeah because he's very talented I know he was mightily surprised was that the proudest moment on, on the tennis court for you what, what who who have you beaten that that we might know well I actually the first the reason I learned to play tennis was because I heard there was a tennis tournament in Monte Carlo mm -hmm. I said, hey, this sounds good to me. I'll learn. And I did. I didn't learn <laughs> that well. But I went, and Princess Grace was still alive then. And I got to the finals and ended up beating her. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It wasn't such a great idea. I wasn't invited back for about 10 years. Well, that so. happens. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. You, um, you have an interesting story about how someone predicted that Abby would come into your life. Tell that story. Yeah, it was actually uh, um, Dick Van Patten's wife. She's a numerologist? Yeah, or yeah. And this is like, I don't know, 12, 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. She did my numbers. And she actually, she predicted that I would be very successful in a show. And she, and she said it was like, but it was, the character would be a bad guy kind of thing. And, and all these things. And... I don't go for tarot cards or any of those kinds of things. And this, I don't know, for some reason I really listened to everything she said, and everything she said came true. Wow. I've not... I actually, she still does it, and I've asked her again to do it. And she's like a little reticent about it now, because I think she's so right on that sometimes she gets a little nervous with it. Yeah. That's scary. I, see, I don't know if I believe in that kind of stuff. Maybe I should go to Dick's house and get my, my <laughs> numbers read or whatever. You could try it, you know. I mean, I didn't want to know either. I didn't really want to know what was going to happen, particularly if it was bad. Yeah. Don't they hold hold back if it's bad? Isn't that like a rule? Yeah, yeah. They wouldn't tell you if something terrible was going to happen. But that, that's the thing. I asked her one other time, and she sort of did it, and I think she saw something kind of bad mm. for me, and she kind of backed off of it. Yeah. So maybe she has some sort of gift. I don't know. I talked about the uh, CBS project that's coming up. Uh, what is it all about? Well, it's a movie called In My Daughter's Name, and I play a mother whose beautiful teenage daughter is raped and murdered. And then the young man who did it is brought to trial, and he gets off on a kind of a twinkie defense, a temporary insanity yeah. defense. And then... I'm so outraged and so frustrated by that verdict that I kill him. And then I go to trial. Well, let me see the clip. <laughs> let me see the clip, Sandy. Do you remember what she said to you? What was it? She, she said she was sorry. We had a fight. I told her she was irresponsible. She was always such a disappointment to me. Can I ask you about that, too? Um, how did you...
you get the tears? <laughs> the strange thing is, that was the first and only take that we did. Mm -hmm. uh, people say, you know, doesn't it take a lot of takes and everything to do? And, and the way it happened really was that the girl who played my daughter, Ari Myers, who was on Kate and Alley for a long time, she's a wonderful young actress. We had done the scene where she leaves. That was the last moment that I saw her before she died. And she was so good in the scene that all I had to do was recall the scene and put myself in those, in those real circumstances. And it just evoked a great deal of emotion in me. Yeah. Have you ever, and I'm, I know how this town is, have you ever experienced sexual harassment or been in any situation that would make this an easy role for you to understand? Well, yeah, I mean, a long time ago in New York, when I was first starting out, agents and manager type people prey on young, very green actresses. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd have agents where you'd go to their, in New York, you can go to their office and, you'd, you know, talk to them and try and get an agent you're starting out. And they'd say, here, take this script and go home and learn. Come back and read this scene with me tomorrow. We'll see if you can act. You go home and you look at the scene, and it was a very sexually explicit kind of scene and things like that. And you go, wait a minute. But when you're very young like that, you don't know, well, maybe that's the kind of thing, you know, that I'm the kind of scene, and he won't really do it. It's a very difficult thing to do, I mean, and it still goes on. It still goes on today. Yeah. Yeah. You had the ending changed on this thing, didn't you? On the movie, yeah, I did. I did because, you know, I mean, as, as we've seen recently, um, Vigilantism is not something that we want to um, have in this country. And I go and kill the guy in this, in this movie, and the way it originally ended was that I got off on a temporary insanity defense as well. And I said, no, I won't do the movie if that's the way it ends. It has to end with me getting a sentence, too, because I can't put out there to the public that it's okay or it's ever justified to kill another person.